Hello, my name is Noel Murphy and I'd like to give you a presentation on my research project proposal. Uh, and you will see there on the left hand side, a handsome fellow himself. But just by way of uh, an introduction to myself and to give you some background and context, I'm a lecturer in the Department of the Built Environment and I'm teaching aspiring architecture technologists and building surveyors and construction managers, teaching them the skills of drawing and reporting and designing and detailing and construction, all to do with the construction of buildings. So the topic of interest to me, uh, which has driven the research question that I'm going to bring forward, it concerns a question of student motivation and demotivation and thereby the engagement that is driven from this. So this arises from some conversations and anecdotal evidence that has come firstly from lecturers who sometimes would comment on why students may or not may not be engaging and giving suggested reasons for this. And some of the reasons are that, you know, students' motivation or engagement is dropping over the last few years. Um, it may or may not be, but there's something that interests me, certainly. So some students or some lecturers would certainly suggest that students are happy to settle for a pass, whereas in the, uh, a few years ago, they would have been striving for a first. So is this real? Um, I can't really make a comparison of what things were like uh, five years ago or 10 years ago, but I think we do have to take into account contemporary living, things like the pandemic, things like um, the movements that within social media, social interactions. Um, so th these are things that might feed into this. Now, students might give anecdotal evidence that lectures or programs expect too much. And perhaps they're true in saying that. It does stand to reason that some of these programs seem to be ever expanding. So because building regulations and planning regulations are becoming more wide and more vast, does that mean the students then, their knowledge or the expectations for, uh, put upon students is that they have to uh, widen their engagement or be more motivated? So under this topic, I will be seeking evidence from lecturers about this question, evidence from students about the question, and also exploring what are the contemporary influences that may be at play. So a good understanding of the, what these factors might be, I feel uh, would be very, very useful information to lecturers and to students alike. So this is what makes me think that this would be a valuable research topic. So rationale for proposed study and the proposed research question. Well, when I've been assembling my thoughts on the question of motivation and demotivation and engagement, I refer to the literature to see what it outlined and what some of the thinking on these issues are. So the variety of approaches, of approaches in teaching can enhance the student interest and motivation. But also self-motivation is a trait of independent learning, but also isolation can lead to demotivation. Research can also show that student motivations can be shaped by the peer groups and social interactions. So we have to think about how the changing shape of society, even things like the pandemic or social media or even TikTok, or the changing shape of education creates new factors of motivation or demotivation. So I'm thinking in, in a contemporary fa uh, fashion here. Also, how are these factors viewed by students and by lecturers? And when we look at that, do we find that their views concur or do they collide? And what is the link between student engagement and interest and active learning? So to be highly engaged in class, it would seem that you do need to be highly motivated. So therefore, what is the research question that I am considering? And here it is. What are the contemporary motivation and demotivation factors affecting student engagement as viewed by students and lecturers? So what exactly do we mean when we say motivation and demotivation and engagement? Here's some of the ideas that I've taken from reading on the subjects. So motivation can be a complex source of power, but it can be an attractive or a hindering force. And importantly, 
there is no one overarching definition. Motivation is defined as the student's desire or their interest in engaging with the learning. Engagement is a complex term with patterns in motivation, cognition and behaviour. And trying to seek what is the di difference between motivation, demotivation and engagement. Motivation, motiva motivation and engagement are very much tied together with motivation being about direction and energy and engagement about putting the energy into action. <clears throat> so if you think about students being motivated or demotivated, it's going to be the lecturer that's going to recognize this through the engagement that the student brings. So if there is no overarching definition, as we've just seen, <clears throat> then how do I consider motivation and demotivation and engagement in the context of this study? So for me, it seems that motivation can be a powerful force, but demotivation can be a debilitating force. So I'm considering motivational factors as those which will inspire students to produce good work and to achieve good marks and to engage well with their programme. And demotivational factors are those, as those which might hinder students, cause them to lose interest and interrupt their learning. So if you think about what mo motivations might include, it could be um, motivational factors could be engaging and encouraging lecturers, engaging and encouraging lectures or informative lectures and, and good presentations. It could be good college or university facilities. Maybe a motivating factor might be blended learning options. And what would demotivational factors include? Possibly if students are working part time or full time and then they cannot fully function as a student. Maybe traditional lectures are looking boring and looking staged compared to fast paced uh, social media. TikToks, you can learn a lot of information from a meme or TikTok in just a few seconds. Whereas, you know, it might take 15 minutes in a boring lecture to, to, to get the same message. Uh, also heavy content loads. So where programs are trying to squeeze in all of this industry expectation, that could be a demotivator as well. It could even be simple, uh, something quite as simple as um, a student can't get a parking space. So they're not even, they can't, you can't start with your motivation if you're demotivated to even attend or go to the college. It also could be mental health issues. It could be financial issues. So we have to think about all of these things and, and understand it from the student's point of view, certainly. And that might give rise to how the lectures or the college might deal with it. So arising from the rationale and the definitions, so what are the study aims to address the, the, the research question? So my aims here are to get the lecturer's views on what motivates and demotivates students, if they know what they are, uh, and the factors they feel influence engagement. Students' views on what motivates and demotivates themselves and the factors they feel uh, influence their own engagement. And then factors caused by contemporary society or living, contemporary living that affects the engagement through the, uh, their engagement through their motivations and demotivations. It's, it's getting into the minds of students and saying, what is motivating you to be here uh, to keep you going? Or what is demotivating you? What is affecting your engagement? These are very interesting things to me. So a good understanding of what these factors are could actually help colleges and lecturers to influence student motivations and engagements. So methodology, what methods to use? Should I use qualitative or quantitative? Should it be descriptive, narrative, grounded? I think for me, the method to be proposed is mixed methods. In other words, collecting both quantifiable um, evidence along with narrative evidence as well. There are many factors that could feed into the, the issues of motivation and demotivation. I've just mentioned some of them, but what are, what are all of the factors? Trying to collect all of that up could be formulated by um, using a survey questionnaire. But to me, um, I'm more for the, the narrative approach, the, the conversational approach, the focus group approach. Um, I'm discussing with both lecturers and students, um, having an open group discussion, exactly how that's going to be done, 
got to think more about that. But that would, certainly would be one of the approach. So I think for me, it's a mixed uh, series of methods. Quantifiable data via survey questionnaires. Qualitative data via conversations or focus groups engaging with both the students and the lecturers. Personally, I would be more for the inclusive open group conversation. That's the type of space that I feel that I might operate well in myself. So um, if you have an excellent level of engagement in the conversation, then I, I think you, you might yield very good results. And I think that focus groups might also benefit from peer interactions, student to student, where they can be more open and honest. So questionnaires could have a specific range of options that uh, tick boxes or, or questions, you know, trying to find out how many students are working or how many are influenced by very, uh, various factors, but also some open ended questions that will allow them to say something else that's on their mind that hasn't been asked by the question. And in conversation or focus groups, it's an opportunity to dig further into some of the areas arising to give a greater understanding and exploration. Those are my references and my two questions for you are, I would value the audience to comment on the proposed methodology that I've chosen uh, and the direction I've chosen. And there are maybe things that I've not thought of that you might uh, enlighten me on. And the overall direction of my proposal. And if you think that there's some specific motivation or demotivational or engagement factors that I haven't thought of here that you think could affect students could form part of my questionnaire. Thank you for your valuable time.